Uh, ah, yeah, look, he, he was playing it into the corner to the run. There's no doubt in my mind. And you only have to look at the rest of Connolly's performance to say <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, Mickey Hart here. You're listening to GAR Football Show. The GA Hour with Colin Parkinson is brought to you by Paddy Power, home of the Money Back Special. I'm not finished yet, it took me a long time to get here. Scores of the highest quality, big fetching, monster collisions, torpedo kicks, man-on-man battles, tactical switches, Clifford, Ganey, Manion O'Callaghan, Kilkenny, all scoring four from play. Goal chances, mistakes, last days defending, counter-attacking, history being made. Ah, lads, how could you not love football? Ah, Dublin are the greatest of all time. Willie couldn't face it, so he's left the country. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm here by two delighted Kildare and Meave men. Johnny Doyle, the legend that is, and the peerless Keen Ward. Boys, we've seen Dublin celebrate before, but that was a little bit more than we've seen normally, isn't it? That, 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 that meant something more, like the culmination of everything they've been working for. Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd like to think it did. Uh, sometimes, you know, we were talking off air, you know, you'd, you'd wonder your, your own reaction if, if, if you were ever lucky enough, I suppose, to be in that situation and they're, they're gone beyond, they're, you know, <laughs> into, into territory, no other team, no other player have gone. Um, but they seem to enjoy it, you know, you could see it even in some of the post-match commentary. Um, you know, obviously, Jim Gavin is, is a guy that doesn't show huge emotion. That's just, the way he is and, and should, we should accept that um, other managers like to jump around and you know but that's that's it but you could see it in even himself there was just a an air of satisfaction about you know what what they have achieved and it's it, it's phenomenal what they have achieved um but they seem to enjoy it anyway and i'd say you know away from the camera in 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 some back room in, in the Gibson Hotel, I'd say them boys really really enjoyed it yeah. and, and more luck to them. But even like running down to the hill like again we've, that's been replayed over and over five years in a row but like they were jumping up, there were limbs going everywhere. Like this did seem to be their target all along. Ah, uh, yeah, of course it was. But I think it's it's more to do with the fact of how they actually won it in yeah. the end. Um, sometimes it's uh, you know I think Jack McCaffrey has spoken about it. You know that the 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 magnitude of the achievement of winning five All Irelands in the row that doesn't really hit anybody until they're probably long retired, until they can reflect back. And think you know over their career in total, and you know if 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 the five in a row is not done in that time period again, you're kind of saying, "Geez, it was a hell of an achievement. We were the first to ever do it," and you reflect on that years after the fact. At the time, it's just a release of emotion. Like, say for example, for Jack McCaffrey, he's after going off, he's had a man of the match performance the first day out. He's had to be taken off mm-hmm. due to an injury the second day out. You know. He he can't control anything. He can make no contribution for the second half of the game. So when the final whistle blows and you know you've won and you've you've got the All Ireland and you've you've won the title, it's just a release. And you would expect that. I mean, sometimes you you look at the dubs and uh, I suppose they they manage to keep a lot of that sort of stuff very much under wraps. And a lot of the time, you know, say during the game, they they get scores and they don't really celebrate hugely. And that seems to be a very conscious mindset that they have. But Certainly after the game, I mean, to be able to reflect back on on the All-Ireland is one thing, but I just think the nature of how they had to win in a replay, you know, really being brought to the pin of their collar. Um, you know, they, they nearly won this All-Ireland in the last 10 minutes of the drawn <laughs> game. Yeah. You know, with 14 men, they really had to go to the well on that occasion. They probably didn't have to go to that same level in the at the latter mm. stage of the game because, they, the, you know, the goal was the crucial score in the match. Yeah, and it's not it's not the first time they've had to go to the well. Like, and they always they always dig it out. And it might seem inevitable to us. We always predict Dublin are going to win. But like ten minutes after uh, full time, and they'd celebrated enough. And Cluxton had done his speech, and he he thanked the GA for putting on the competition. <laughs> like McCaffrey and Kilkenny were like pushing each other and screaming in each other's faces, punching. Like you know, it was like they couldn't believe what had just happened. Like, and even Stephen Cluxton was doing a, a lap of honor around the place. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, I, I, I watch Stephen Cluxton because you're looking for little maybe body <laughs> language signs and, you know, he's 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 achieved what he's achieved in the game and you'd wonder where the hunger's going to come from. Has he, you know, is, was that his finish line? And we we probably saw it, Stephen Cluxton that we're not really used to seeing and, and, you know, he seemed to be very emotional. Uh, you know, I saw him going around to different players and it was, you'd wonder, was that hug a hug of goodbye or a congratulations or a bit of both, you know? So all these things, I suppose, we'll, we'll, over the next few weeks, there'll be lots of talking points around them. But they, they certainly enjoyed it and, and rightly so. Um, you know, the, and, and I suppose uh, 
it, it's it's a culmination of everything over the, you know there's so much emotion around it the, the, you know coming Kerry pushing them so so close in the first day you know and then finishing up probably with the last five or six minutes you know they, they stepped over the finish line and probably could could enjoy mm. it but it's, it's it's a phenomenal achievement and and um, you know they're, they're, they're some team yeah I refuse to believe that Jeremy Connolly's pass was not meant for Kilkenny. I've heard some people say he was aiming for Conor Callahan. No way. No I, way. That was a perfect pass. Well, all I can say is it was a phenomenal interception from Kilkenny on the <laughs> run. Because that's what it was. Um, I don't know. Was there anything else on? Like, uh, when you're uh, looking yeah, at look, it? He, he was playing it into the corner to the run. There's no doubt in my mind. And you only have to look at the rest of Connolly's performance to say <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, you know, yeah. um, there's, no, there's no way. Everything he was doing was going wrong for him. So um, if he managed to do that on on the button for Kilkenny it's the great one of the greatest passes of all time <laughs> look it doesn't really matter he was he was trying to hit his own space um you know the turnover before it was uh, equally as impressive um beautiful flighted pass and Kilkenny took it brilliantly whether whether it was meant for him exactly or not it, Dublin won't care it ended up over the bar in the end yeah Connolly I think he had like five plays on the ball and like twice he hand passed it away yeah. he just hand passed it away one time he overplayed it one time he did set up Niall Scully for a goal chance but even then he almost lost it and, yeah, and yeah. looked they have overplayed it and then I still think that pass like whether like I think he put that pass exactly where he wanted it to oh, go oh absolutely yeah yeah there's no doubt about that he was trying to hit that zone and Kilkenny just happened to be in that zone at the time and intercepted the pass. I mean, it just that's the way it worked out. Yeah, I think the same. And it looked unbelievable because Kilkenny didn't even, you know, he took it nearly not looking at it. It just yeah. landed like it was just everything went right. But look, at they're, they're, and it, it looked absolutely fantastic. And I suppose no one will ever know, even even maybe Mr. Connolly might <laughs> might really <laughs> sure what he was trying to do. But it looked very good. Uh, from a player that you know must be under horrendous pressure every time he takes the field, you know, because he's just probably the most scrutinised player, and you know, leading into his big talk about about whether he was going to start, there was a, a picture of the program was gone doing the doing the rounds, and you know, he was down obviously photoshopped yeah. in where he was playing at, at, <laughs> at seven, and there was big talk. That was me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe so <laughs> to get the to get the old hits, but uh, no, he he's um, and even the goal chance, you know. He had two options, obviously a brilliant save by the Kerry keeper. But should he have shipped to the one side? All those things, you know. He, and and he and he's only human. Oh yeah, was. like he was completely selfish there. Like, Absolutely. Like Dublin would have done that play a thousand times in training, even this year. Like you know, where they're coming three of three v two. Oh, his his problem is he wasn't training all year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he actually would have got the goal if he had a shifted to the left. It oh, would have yeah. come back to him, and he could have yeah. just panned it in. But. He saw his name in lights, and that would have cut, like that would have capped off his career. Never mind that game. Yeah, you could imagine now the scene maybe in the board's head uh, Sunday morning, and uh, you know everyone in grey farm and Jim comes over. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, come over here, we have a chat. <laughs> yeah. What were you thinking? Like, yeah, you but we'll get into the analysis. I want to just um, get Connor Lane out of the way first. So I didn't think he had a good first half, but initially I thought the Conor Callahan. Well, it was he blamed Mick Fitzsimons, but I thought it was definitely a black card. But then speaking to a couple of referees, well, Callahan pulls back. Tag Morley and they're saying that's a holding offence so yeah. it's actually a, a tick so we got the right sort of punishment we got the wrong person so again we come back to the, the black card rule like you know it's it's all wrong it should be punishing cynicism but it's not so yellow card should be rough play red card should be dangerous play and a black card should be cynical play but we have like this pathetic like the least extensive list of all time for a black card offence and yeah. that was a classic example oh but sure like the simple thing with the black card is if a man is bearing down with a goal opportunity mm. and you whether you pull him back whether you hand trip him whether you drag him to the ground you know there's all this talk about did he intentionally do it like you know there's so many so much of a grey area I think the black card should be you know if it's a case of, of someone's bearing down on goal and you, and, you, and you interfere with him a professional foul mm. You go. But it's, it's, a, it's a deliberate foul. It yeah. stopped the goal chance. Absolutely. And the punishment doesn't fit the crime. So whether and then you get out the field, maybe some lad, you know, can't get out of the way and it's seen as a body check and he's there, you know, oh, I didn't mean to come across you there, or the two runs collide, and next thing he's sitting on the line for a black car. Yeah. And yet, you know, someone like that going down was it or big or big yeah, yeah. was going through. Um and it's a tick. Do you know it doesn't make it doesn't make any yeah. sense to me. Yeah, well, I think Conor Lane, not to really get into it too much, but he had a terrible match, really. Uh, he got a lot of things wrong. Um, 
you know, Conor Callaghan had a blatant penalty. Yeah. Uh, in the first half, wasn't given. Tom uh, Sullivan, just Tom Sullivan, him. back to back to the ball, two arms around him. You know, Kerry get a turnover there and come down the field. Conor Callaghan, every time he got possession, was being fouled. You know, being pulled around the shoulder, grabbed. You know, there was a lot of these technical fouls that weren't being pulled throughout the game. And then, you know, there were a lot of soft frees then given on the back of it. So it was a strange one. There was a lot of inconsistency in his performance. Now, look, it didn't, I don't believe any of the decisions really affected the result overall. But at half time, to me, it looked like Kerry were coming out on the, on the, on the good side of a lot of those decisions. Absolutely. Um, through, you know, throughout the field, like I know the, the point we're making about that run back from Conor Callaghan where he sort of pulls Morley round the shoulder. But that was going on all over the pitch yeah. throughout the game and there was no frees being given at all. So I can understand why uh, why it wouldn't have been given as a black card or why there wasn't a yellow card. Look, it was unfortunate that they got the wrong man. It was the correct punishment. Um, but it was just, again, it's clever play. The Dublin players are, you know, they have great ability, but they're very clever as well in their use of cynical play yeah. too. I mean, Conno Callaghan knows that if he holds onto his jersey and pulls him to the ground, you know, he's going to get a black card. If he just grabs his jersey and then lets go as Morley falls... It's just a you know it's a yellow card if he you know if he tries to tackle him and you know David Moran was left in the same position straight after half time. To be fair to him, he probably just couldn't couldn't actually catch or get a grip of Merchant at the time. Yeah. But if if David Moran had had grabbed Merchant and just held on to him and not let him fall to the ground, it's a yellow yeah, card. Yeah. And that's the most cynical thing. You and that's do, the most so, cynical yeah. thing. But I mean, let's be honest about it. That's just you know that's you you know taking advantage of the rule in its yeah. current format as opposed to grabbing them and throwing them onto the ground you know yeah. so and I, th- I think that 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 passage of play you know when we're talking about and listen refereeing we could talk about it absolutely yeah day. there's and so many things to, going on yeah you, you don't, you really, don't want really want to you know and it's a tough tough gig and like i mean any match of refereeing is a tough gig but all our final in those conditions is unbelievably is tough but you take even the from that that to me the, the change in was the tr- from the throw in a half time to merchant's goal you know looking at it again he throws in the ball jack barry decides not to even look he, he's he body might, checking too man it should man. be a free to dublin or or, yeah. or, or is it or is it a black <laughs> just, card yeah. for body checking you know third man tackle yeah. if you want to say yeah. say that so that's a major one uh, and then the bigger one as well uh, you know the rule book states four steps with the ball now he took at least 12, maybe 13 steps. Like, that's three times yeah, as yeah. much as you. It's not six steps or, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and then you're looking and that's saying, ah, well, there were small steps. This is a massive... <laughs> <It was> a <laughs> <holiday>. <laughs> it's Keen smiling. Yeah. I knew you were thinking about that one. I'm just <laughs> laughing about it, Conan, because it's something we've discussed earlier yeah. on the air. You know, this is your rule that you want yeah. to force. Let him play like, away. If yeah, where, where if a guy is being fouled, the Conan says, take as many steps as you want. And I'm saying, well, that's not the rule. <laughs> the rule rugby, is absolutely. absolutely. And look, yeah. I'm not taking... The finish was sublime. Yeah, and yeah. absolutely brilliant and finish yeah. like if you know if if Clifford or, or Paul Mannion did actually say that, like we'd be talking about for weeks like he just passed it but the keeper never yeah. even moved and unbelievable but like 13 steps and, and yeah. Lane had his hand up for advantage so for the foil on Moore so once Merchant's foil in the ball then he should bring it back of for course, the initial yeah. foil I, and even in the first half just back to another referee in decision which I thought was bizarre Con O'Callaghan was being fouled and the referee allowed advantage but he blew the whistle for a free the Kerry defender stopped and Con O'Callaghan blasted it over the bar and then he just allowed the point to stand. Yeah. It was lawful. Like, Shane Ryan in the, in the Kerry goals had stopped playing when he heard the whistle. If that ball had ended up in the net, would he have allowed the goal? Yeah. So you can't have it every single way. Like, I mean, they're, they're wrong decisions. Like, And it's actually not fair. Like, I was actually, at halftime, I was thinking, God, I don't want this to happen. Like, I don't want Kerry to win the game on the base of bad decisions or Dublin to win the game on the base of bad decisions yeah. because it's actually not right because it was such a great contest between two teams really going at it. And it's unfortunate that I even had that thought in my head because usually, genuinely, you generally don't have those thoughts. It was just that I know it's very, very difficult, but at the same time, there was a number of them there that were very much borderline and they're, they're match-changing decisions. And to me... Like, good and all as the goal was, look, realistically, under the rules, it shouldn't have stood. Mm. And if you can't play the game under the rules, then what's the point? You know, yeah. as I say, you know, it's that was a crucial score in the game. You know, Kerry, if you look at it, when Dublin had that cushion, Kerry are making, because of the 
panic that ensues when you're a few points behind in a high pressure situation. Kerry start making wrong decisions. There was one particular example where Paul Ganey is, who had a brilliant game, but he has the ball and he has men left and right and he's trying to get in and try and force a yeah. goal scoring opportunity when they're a few points behind. If, they, if Dublin don't have that cushion, he clips the ball over the bar and they go again. It changed the way Dublin played as well because Dublin were able to sit back and just soak up pressure. If Dublin, if the game was in the melting pot, Dublin have to play it a different way. So the game is fundamentally changed by the, by the goal and realistically it shouldn't have stood. Yeah. And then as you mentioned, Keane, like all those little decisions throughout, especially the first half, Jack McCaffrey produced the most perfectly timed, perfectly executed tackle. Yeah. I think it was on Spillane in the middle of the pitch. He gave a free for it. Uh, Kieran Kilkenny was about to slot over off his left Paul Murphy just drags him away from the ball and like the referee just turns away and then Kerry go up and score he blows up Niall Scully for too long when he has the ball for about two seconds and then I think Clifford gets his first score of the day so he's off mortar and then there was just these little things that were affecting the game and I think when you think back to having David Goff two weeks before like David Goff's almost become to referee him what Dublin are to football. <laughs> like you know, yeah. he's raised the standard that much, and you're like, oh, he would have given it. Yeah, and I know. I know they've changed that rule. It used to be the the same referee had refereed the, the next game. To me, the best referee referees the, the yeah, top. I yeah, would say and that and I, like if that be David Goff who had a a, a, a brilliant game uh, the first day. He should have got the replay. I, I certainly think that you know your best referees, have, like, yeah. and if if he's the best referee for ten years, he gets yeah. the ten All Ireland finals, and yeah. and it's it's no different than than a, a team trying to wants to play in a county final. If you want to play in a county final, you want to play in an All Ireland final, you get to that level, and and that for me is it would be it would be a, an interesting decision for, like I know, I know maybe there's there's baggage comes from one to the other, but you know still for me you get the best people on the biggest day, and and that's your reward for getting yourself to that level. It's, yeah, and Jim Gavin, lads, he sounds like it might be the end for him. So he was talking afterwards and he said, I haven't had those conversations with his backroom team he's talking about, about leaving, um, for obvious reasons. I will over the next couple of weeks and then scope it out. You sit down with the county board and you always review it. I have a profession outside of this role. I've been asked to do for Dublin, outside of this role I've been asked to do for Dublin, and I have family commitment too. It all goes into the mix, but it's not the time to talk about it. I have committed to next year, so we'll reflect on it. I mean, it could be like a natural end for him. He did sort of bat that suggest in a way, but then those quotes sort of seem like he might be thinking about it. And to be honest, like after six all Ireland's in seven years, five National Leagues, seven Leinsters, obviously, I mean, it would be a great time to go out. And like, I know we always talk about Dublin's advantages and like they're there and they're there to be talked about, but I genuinely don't think many people could have done what Jim Gavin has done with that team. Like Dublin used to always be... Like, you know, they used to have some of these advantages, not the same amount of GA money. They had all the natural advantages, but they were just sort of a stereotypical town team. Like, you know, they had a bit of an ego. They didn't want it enough. People love coming up and putting them in their place, but he's just changed the culture completely in there. Like, it's, it's unbelievable the way everybody has bought into it. And not just the players. I was speaking to the boys outside Crew Park, who I, I think are good enough to be in the 26. But they're there with their jersey on. They've got a headband on. And they're supporting him. There's no bitching, no moaning. Any other county, those boys would be hoping Dublin lose. You know, but they're all there and they're all committed to it. And if they get the chance, they'll they'll take it. And it's just this stream of class players now and quality coaches that are just waiting in line. Yeah, look, he's done an incredible job. Um, you know, it, you couldn't overstate how good how good mm. of a job he's done and the entire management team. But that's all down to him. Like he's the one who you know, puts Jason Sherlock in the role and, and empowers mm. him to, to do the coaching that he does and Darcy and all these other guys that are involved with them. And he's um he's he's put the platform in place for the players, for the management group to, to do what they're doing. And he deserves massive credit for that because that takes huge vision. It takes it takes a it takes a particular type of character as well to, to be able to do that. You know, a lot of managers are real control freaks in yeah. a way that they want control of absolutely everything. And, you know, they want everything done sort of their way for, for a manager to be able to sort of step back a little bit from that and to provide the framework and to let different people, experts in their own field, excel within that. I mean, that's I mean, that's the that's the optimum that you want from any setup. So he's done an incredible job. And if he does decide to step away, it'll be it'll be a, a massive act to follow. Um but I have no doubt that if he does step away, he'll be leaving, you know, all of the frameworks in place and everything there ready for a continuity candidate to step in. Yeah. But that's provided he makes that call. Ultimately, I'm sure he gets huge uh, enjoyment and pleasure from it. And, you know, it's it's a wonderful place for him to be in that he's he has, I suppose, there's there's no pressure uh, 
on him to step away. There's no negativity, nothing but positivity for him for what he's done and achieved. And it's very rare in management you probably get that. Oh, very, very rare. Normally management ends in, in uh, t- tears for somebody yeah. whether it's the players because the way players are programmed, if things don't go well, they're quick to point the finger and, and talk about training and talk about talk about what they should have had and there was no this and there was no that. So, um, and, and you might from the outside look in and say, oh, look at all the talent he has and, and uh, the easy, sure, it must be easy to manage Dublin. And that can be the biggest challenge, you know, when you're winning because human nature being what it is, people get ahead of their station, you know, when you're winning and maybe producing, producing, yeah. um, Fantastic player, but there is a there is a humility about that team, um, and I think that you know there's lots of things bandied around about culture and stuff like that. But you know, you just look at even the Bernard Brogan uh, scenario. So he didn't make the twenty six, um, you know, brought in for the twenty six. A little bit of talk that maybe things aren't going that great, and maybe you know the Brogans weren't happy and all this sort of thing. But yet, and didn't come on, and maybe most managers would have said, "Here, do you know what this is done? You know, run him in the sentiment behind around it." Um, but the happiest person in Crow Park, to me, with his two sons, was Bernard Brogan. You know, and it's very hard to disguise that. I don't think that was a falseness in any way. Mm. Um, you know, you cut to as we saw on Twitter came up, and I don't know one of it, and I think it was Karma Costa. There was a bit of music going around, and there was a bit of a, and here cuts into the shot, is. The, the greatest goalkeeper ever to play the game, the greatest captain has gone to levels no other player has gone to. And what's he doing? Sweeping out the dressing room. <laughs> like, how much, like, is this, what, what's going on in this guy's head? Make sure so, you're recording this, lads. But, but, but like, it's unbelievable. Even in, like, I, we've often talked in the club and, you know, when we were clear about things, you know, different cultures. And you'd actually forget. Yeah. It's not that you wouldn't clean out the dressing room. <laughs> you know, you'd be that disappointed. You'd kick bottles going out the door or whatever. You would, it wouldn't be a disrespect, but it just wouldn't enter your head. Yeah. You'd, want it to, you'd want to get out of an oven as quick as you could <laughs> because <laughs> this lad was after <laughs> kicking seven colours out of you. Um, so, but to be even in that frame of mind, um, you know, and that's, I think that's, you know, it's a combination of, of, of a lots of different things. It's Obviously, Jim has, gelled all the thing and you know there's a, hu- a huge management team if he's to talk to all his management team individually we might get a decision <laughs> till Christmas there's that many there. but he's able to ge- and I would say there's he, he there's expectations it's not just you know you're not invited onto that team just for the the, the, the bit of a, uh, a spin with them and see what happens I'd say there's responsibility I need this by this time you're doing the video analysis I need that gone out to the players by this time and I'd say there's a pressure on it, on everybody and I think that's that's what he, what he brings and and obviously you have characters you know I, I'm not sure whether they can be designed fully but they're you know the likes of of, of Clux, I think that's just the way he is and there's diff- there's big players involved in that and that uh, squad which which helps helps him um, to achieve that but what is achieved is is phenomenal um, and I you know I, I certainly think the, from looking at him and I, I spoke to him once in my life very briefly um, but I think if he does decide to go I would imagine the way he is, he's the conveyor belt will still go on. I think there's people in nine. I've no doubt there's a, they're working hard on Cluxton's replacement and all those things because inevitably it's, it's going to arrive. And whether it's it's now or whether it's next year or the year after, um, I would think that he's all about leaving Dublin in a better place. Or he might do an Alex Ferguson on it and bring in a David Moyes to make himself <laughs> look better. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. All right, next up we'll, we'll look at some analysis. All right, so Peter Keane is just the latest in a long, long, long line of managers to find out that Dublin's fullback line isn't that weak and they're not that susceptible under a high ball. So the first eight minutes, they tried four lumped balls into the area. Guess what happened? Dublin got three points out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so Kerry got no return. Dublin got three points, three like three plays. They took the ball back and went up the pitch and scored. The first one, Jim O'Connor just hoofed it and he was backtracking. He was in no position to really play it in, so... There was no appreciation on the pass. It was sort of under pressure. Gini dropped it in fairness, probably had a chance. Merchant wins the break, Dublin score. The second one, Moran hits it in, but there's like a 30 second delay. There's a free kick, so everybody's back. Moran tries it anyway. Cluxton takes it clean, cleans out whoever's in front of him. Dublin score. Adrian Spillane tries his luck. Cluxton points it down. McCaffrey breaks it. And then another free kick. Conor Callahan wins the break because they're that well set up. You know, look, look, look at these players we're talking about as well. If it's Simons is in there, McCaffrey. Merchant, Conor Callahan, these are quality players. Like, like Dublin are well set up for this. Oh, they are. Look, 
I suppose early in the game you could understand um, you could understand Kerry trying a little bit like they, they were very deep in their own defence they were I suppose with the with the team they started um, you could tell that they were trying to play more of a counter attacking game they never really got any territory against the Dubs at all throughout the course of the match a lot of their scores were from deep and early on they look they tried a couple of things um, I wouldn't fault them for that um, you know Paul Ganey is very very good over his head mm. and you know he was probably a little bit unlucky with the very first one he got two hands on the ball and he yeah. just kind of got a little bit clean he got bumped in the air maybe you know on another day he could easily have got a, gotten a free in from that um, but it, it it was it was the sort of bad high ball yeah. that they that Kerry have sometimes done when Donaghy is in there when they're all I suppose panicking about trying to get the ball in spoke the last day about how when Tommy Walsh came in like David Moran was floating you know kind of the flight on the ball was pretty good he was playing it to his advantage wasn't wasn't much of that now in the first few minutes so the tactic itself you look it's fine the execution wasn't good enough and I suppose when the execution isn't good and your decision making isn't good um you give Dublin back the ball and you, it's rare you get it back. You know, yeah. it generally finishes with uh, a scoring opportunity or they're certainly going to ask questions of you, um, whether that be, you know, in your own full back line or just the energy throughout your team where you have to chase and run after the possession, get back into your zones. And over the course of a game, that's what wears teams down. Kerry actually did really well to counteract it and, and to come back in the first half. You know, they, they, they figured it out pretty quickly after a few balls that they needed to they needed to run it and you know, they did that to good effect. But I don't know what Johnny thinks, you know, like it's as a forward you kinda you, you kinda want that direct ball. Like if if it's two on two, three on three inside, you're saying, lads, get the ball in here, there's no point in But any type of ball, like you don't yeah, care. That's uh, well the, that's there's the, the difference thing. is the, the distance the ball was travelling from. Yeah. Like when that's travelling from the half back line or from deep in the midfield, well it, look, to be honest, it depends who's kicking the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the honest answer. Like if it's David Moran kicking it to you, you're saying, This is all right, because I'll have a chance here. Yeah. I'll have a better than fifty fifty chance of winning because the the he'll get the right depth on the pass or you'll have the right angle on the pass or the flight of the ball will be good where some lads are drilling the ball at you it's coming like a bullet it's dropping like a stone it's, it's very difficult to, to, to cope with but yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the big thing you know that ball is you're caught under weight and where and all the defender has to do is just get a hand across he doesn't have to even win the ball just knock your hand off. but if you can get that three or four steps as as Donaghy has done in the past and just no matter how many bodies are there the flight of the ball is right, and he can just get it. He can climb that little bit to get his to get his handle, and it's a it's sort of a low trajectory ball. It, it's a little bit like, like trying to catch a, a kick out. Yeah, you know, it's just coming at the right flight, um, and that to me was the big difference. But you you would wonder was was some of the tactics here the first few balls that's regardless of what else happens, just drive them in there. Yeah, put and it that's in what, there. That's yeah. what it what it looked like, and they were a little bit unlucky. You you would have to because I don't know whether they realised it wasn't working or they said look at the first three balls are going in regardless of anything else and then they went back to look like they went back to on a default where they said look at you know keep the ball and and they worked their way into the game and um, the big surprise for me with Kerry and look at we don't know individuals you, you know we see them like Tommy Walsh was was excellent when he came on yeah, superb team, yeah you know and you think. Would it be worth trying something instead of maybe? No, I I, say, I don't know. Maybe he's a better coming into when the game drops in pace a little bit. But you say, look at, say nothing, throw him in at the start, give him, and then you know just try something different. Because yeah. I thought it was going to take something different to beat Dublin. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I know Peter Keane was saying after the match, you know, we 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 put the two boys in at the same time. But it's very seldom a game is going to go like that. You know when they come in at the same time as they did in the replay, it's gonna it's gonna end yeah. up being the same result. I, oh, well, I, like uh, Gaelic football is is oftentimes very random. Like the thing that Dublin have done really well over the last number of years, through their ball retention and through, d it's very much a systematic approach. You know, it's very choreographed. We'll say, or they certainly have their sort of principles of play or the way they like to do things, um, and there's a pattern to what they do almost all of the time. You know, it's it's when they play. It's when they have played the likes of Mayo, and the game descends into complete chaos. That sometimes that's where you can see that oh, they're under a bit of pressure here. You know, when when Dublin get into their their flow or this this you know where they get to hold on to possession and work it left and right, they're very patient and they have such good individual players that when it becomes a one on one battle in every zone of the pitch, Dublin are going to beat you. You know, because they've just at the minute have better players than everybody else in each of the zones on the pitch, because. I suppose from Kerry's perspective, Kerry have excellent forwards and we're talking about Tommy Walsh and should he have started. But if Kerry start Tommy Walsh, you know, it's either Ganey or Clifford or Stephen O'Brien who doesn't start because 
you know, Sean O'Shea is going to play centre forward and their two wing forwards are basically one of them ends up playing as a wing back to free up Paul Murphy and the other man drops back into the middle of the field to give them that uh, defensive cover against Dublin because they know if we don't have defensive cover, Dublin will just uh, work the ball to a position. They'll see Con O'Callaghan in one on one with Thomas Sullivan and they'll kick any type of ball into him because he'll win it and then he, he won't be stopped by one man. So it's the risk reward thing that we spoke about after the drawn game tr- all over the pitch. Like Kerry having conceded the goal and a couple of points the last day mm. off, off the Dublin kick out. They never pressed Dublin at all. And to me, that's actually the, one of the biggest failings from Kerry's perspective is that rather than Kerry doubling down on their approach to the game and the things that worked well, they got totally spooked by the couple of things that didn't work well. And they actually reverted a little bit back into their shell for large periods. And that to me meant that Dublin... A lot of the hard questions that you would have think that, you know, they should be asking the Dublin at times they just didn't ask them. Like Cluxton was never put any under any pressure on his kickouts. I mean, he was able to just tap the ball out to the cornerback for almost all of them. Now I know Dublin probably did a lot of the same thing on the Kerry kick out, yeah. but that's kind of the way Dublin Dublin are comfortable playing like that. I don't think Kerry are as comfortable. Uh, you know, maybe it'll take them a few more years to to learn it at that level. Or it's just not within the natural psyche yeah. of the Kerry player yeah. and more than it would have been for years under Mead players it's just wanted to play the game a certain way and if it deviated from that even if it over the even if over a number of years it might have been the best thing for the development of the team it's just very hard to to make that switch in a short period yeah. of time so like Shane Ryan was actually he was on 100% from 23 kicks but yeah. Cluxton was 23 out of 25 and as you say when Dublin get the ball like that's where they hurt you then so they're not like any other team where you're sort of happy if they go to cornerback because if they work up Dublin will work it up the pitch like you Absolutely. know whatever, whatever Absolutely. long it takes and, and they'll nearly always get a shot off as we saw yeah, and yeah. you have to disrupt that and they yeah. didn't try and, and, and they're very seldom like Kerry had shots and you nearly they were way worse shots Dublin don't do that you know mm. they just they get it they work it and, and you know how many times as you say um Keen to go back and forth and back, and it's not nice to watch. You're there. Well, has something happened here? Come on, lads! And it goes. I think the the there's something like ninety or a hundred seconds. You know where, and all of a sudden, then out of nowhere, Mannion just comes in the loop, and you know you could walk away. It's going in only one place, and they're really, really good at that. And nobody seems to deviate at all from that. Um, yeah. You know, if but it's, it's not it's, on. It's very hard, Johnny, in a game like if you're playing against a team that that's as good as the Dubs, like all of them individually on the ball like I mean let's face it right if Johnny gets the ball in his hand I'm not going to be able to take it off him because he'll always be able to move away yeah. turn the right way shield the ball away from me and he'll always recycle because he's a good footballer and he just he's able to play he's comfortable on the ball Dublin have you know not all of them are as comfortable as each other but pretty much all their players are good on the ball they take the right option they don't go to contact yeah. so what you have to do on a set play is force them to kick it to a contest because that's the only chance you have really of getting the ball back because outside of that it's a slow methodical build up they don't raffle possession they very they it's nearly always a low risk pass so that saps the energy like there's no intensity to the game from you as a defensive team because you can't get energy because you can't actually get close enough to make contact you can't like bar you have a hold of a lad's jersey somewhere and then you can't do that it's against the rules for you in. <laughs> yeah. so you're trying to stay close to these lads who are really quick really athletic they're all working for each other creating space for each other creating these pockets of space very very difficult to get the ball back so at every opportunity where you can maximise uh, the prospects of the ball being kicked to a contest you know, because if it's kicked, it's obviously in the air longer. You can flood that zone. Even if you don't win it, you can maybe get two or three men around the ball carrier and, you know, and choke him up before he has an opportunity to even get a play in. So to me, you know, against teams of that quality, like Dublin, that was just one area where I thought Kerry, I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't do it. But I'm not saying it's easy, but, no, it's, it's you know, not it's easy, definitely not know. easy, but it's, it's easier than chasing shadows in Crow Park. You know when you're losing the game already at times, you know. Yeah. So so Kerry brought Adrian Spillane back to halfback on Howard. <clears throat> so that freed up Paul Murphy, um, or, and that freed up Johnny Cooper for Dublin the other end. It has to be said, as free flowing and exciting as it was, they were probably two of the least effective free men of all time in a defensive shape. They didn't contribute anything to stopping any scores. No, and particularly particularly you feel that Johnny Cooper's happier in that role. Looking at Paul Murphy, yeah, you correct. think. 
you think that he, he, you know you're nearly caging him in he's because he's a really good attacking football like he played at centre half forward for for yeah. for Kerry he's in a one super stage. player yeah. he's a really and I felt um, Kerry missed that you know he, he he's one of these that you know you're, oh we're talking about this transition but he really is one of these guys that can make that trans- transition happen he's a good passer he's a good finisher he gets up into into positions and very seldom he gives a ball a ball away like he. It was a brilliant save in the replay by by Cluxon and he was nearly stuck in the top corner of the net. So, I think that was a that was a real a, a real sort of plus for for Dublin and a minus for Kerry because uh, it just robbed them of that attacking attacking approach. Um, and and you know, Cooper, you, you feel that he's just he knows his job. He doesn't try. You know, he's not like Philly McMahon even that. The tears up the field. I don't, I don't ever remember getting yeah. a score like Philly. Would take a chance and he'd go up the field and yeah, take well, a point. Philly's, Philly's a better ball player, like than yeah. Cooper. Co- Cooper's a Cooper's probably a very tenacious defender. But you can understand if you were playing against Dublin, there's probably a couple of guys you'd 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 if you were leaving players free, you know, you know who you would be leaving free, and Cooper would probably be one of them. Yeah, because you you would feel that he's going to hurt you less than i.e. Jack McCaffrey yeah, yeah. but look it's very difficult you know there's only at times in a game that Kerry would have been able to do that and there's obviously merits to them flooding their defence and blocking out that zone but it's just at different times of the game you would have you would have felt that Kerry needed to do that now maybe they had planned to do it and they just never got up the field or they didn't have you know many frees in the match where, where the game was slowed up where they were able to get up and get their press organised like that that could be something they could have planned for this all week and it just didn't happen because the game went a certain way but it's one thing that you know they probably should have tried to do but overall in the first half of the game look Kerry didn't start brilliantly raffled a few balls but after that they, they, they hurt Dublin they got some lovely scores you know Clifford came on the loop a few times you know so they, so they did they did have an ability to get scores and their, their their execution was pretty good like both teams you would have to say that there's a reason I suppose that the sweepers that Murphy and, and Cooper weren't able to make much of an impact yeah. because you know more often than not the decision making on the ball under pressure the, the, the pace of the off the ball movement the ball winning ability the forwards um, the support play and and the execution in the shot was just, you know, it really really was excellent stuff from both teams from both sets of forwards in the first half. Yeah, and and really the the sweeper only comes into to you know I suppose its full value is when that kick pass you know that into that long kick pass where all of a sudden then he either interprets the the, the ball and he's able to, to to sweep in and win it. Or the fullback just doesn't have to worry about winning the ball. He just has to knock it away, keep it away from the mm. defender, and all of a sudden, then you've you've a Johnny Cooper mopping it up. When you're running every ball, it's very difficult for the sweeper to be effective. Um, and and I think that that was uh, particularly Dublin. You know, they, as as Keane said already, they don't play 50-50 balls very seldom alright you, you might we're giving Dermot Connolly a lot of bouquets this morning. <laughs> maybe that was a 50-50 and, and the, the right 50 won it he meant that ball yeah oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to burst your bubble there <laughs> but I, I, I think you know both sweepers in the, the style of play of both, of both uh, teams probably didn't lend them to play yeah, that, no, have I, a, I, an influence yeah, on the ha- game you'd have to say that to, that's, that's entirely accurate I mean mm-hmm. When 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 the opposition team is running the ball like that and they're doing it well and they're keeping width in the attack, and they're not taking it to contact, the the sweeper's only purpose is to prevent goal scoring opportunities. And I can't remember in the first half. I mean, Kerry caught Dublin on the break that one time where Morley got through, mm. and you know Dublin threw a lot of intricate hand passing. You know, Con O'Callaghan possibly might have gotten in that time where Thomas Sullivan fouled him, and it could have been a penalty. So, I mean, aside from that, there was very few kind of sights at goal. It was almost a guy would get that half a yard space going down the side and, and, and clip a score. So, you know, very difficult for the for the sweeper in those scenarios to make an impact. And and even you're talking on the goal chances, the, I suppose the clear cut goal chance that Kerry got, who was the right man and coming coming across, you know, um maybe to, to oh, yeah, cut the Simons, angle. Yeah. You know, and, and and Johnny Cooper wasn't too far away watching yeah. Ganey. So you know, they they definitely played the percentages right. Okay, you might say it, it was the wrong option. Um, you know for me, he he just drove it at the keeper, you know, and where it, it either needed a little bit of slow pace into the corner or the ball had to go across yeah. the gainy, you know. I think the angle of his run was pretty bad. It's like the way he was coming in straight, it, yeah. the pass wasn't done. Cooper would have caught it out if he tried to lob but it over. He it, needed to sort of dart inside and, yeah. and bring Ganey into the yeah. play a bit more. If, if he cut back inside, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe he and opened he up the goal. Opened for the goal. Him. Or the other thing, it had to be on the ground. You know, yeah. he, there, oh, yeah. was, there was a gap on the near side if he'd give it, 
you know, you, you, and I know the angle is different, and but you, you, if you remember back the, the um, um, Peter Canavan goal against Kerry in, yeah. in the Ireland, just passed just it by him, it she just rolled it in, saw a little gap, and there was only the width, nearly the width of a ball, I yeah. think, but just saw the gap, composure, where. You know, I'd say Stephen Cluxon was hurting after that because he gave it everything straight at him. You know, and slashed and it like yeah, and maybe <laughs> yeah, and maybe that's the difference between you know if Clifford had got that ball or Ganey had got that ball as opposed to, to Stephen O'Brien. You know, who's yeah, it? but and it's an interesting one because despite everything that went down, I mean, there was it was one thirteen to thirteen at that time, yeah. so it could have been a huge momentum turner in the in the game at that stage. I'm I'm not too sure how many minutes were on the clock, but. Um, it certainly would have uh, fifty three, yeah, something, something like that. Yes, yeah, so it was about there was still twenty minutes left to play, and um, it would have made a huge, huge difference in the context of the game. But yeah, I mean, that, aside from those couple of sighters, yeah, um, and Merchant's goal, which was really out of nothing, and I'm sure we'll talk about the second half in better <laughs> detail. But I mean, how Merchant was allowed to run half the length of the field, you know, again we spoke about it in the drawing game. These carry defenders too preoccupied yeah. with their men. I mean, Tyg Morley did come across, and by the time he got there, he had he had one side of the goals covered. Shane Ryan had the centre. Merchant put it where the only place it could have gone, or it would have been blocked. But Tom Sullivan, he he should have left Conor Callaghan and cut off the danger man. Like good defending is about always forcing the opposition to make an extra pass. So if a man is tearing down the middle, you have to get into his eye yeah. line, make him make the pass. Because if you make him make an extra play, there's always a chance that. You know, the, the pass will be off, the receiver will fumble it, the ball hangs too long and someone can come out and make a difference. But to allow a, a player to run the entire length of the field and have a free shot at goal is is absolutely criminal. If it was under 12 football, you'd be going absolutely ballistic mm. from the line saying, yeah, well, maybe not under 12. That might be a bit <laughs> but that's the way the mead boys yeah, go that's on. The way we <laughs> Sorry, he it. meant under eight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it should have been cut out and for that to happen in an All-Ireland final I, I'm sure there'd be coaches all over like that would n- you would not get a goal like that against Dublin yeah like everything right so obviously David Moore should have just caught it <laughs> he was unchallenged yeah, well, that was the it. big thing he had nearly time to tie his lace yeah. and get up and catch it you know? <laughs> and this is like so this is the criticism we give Kerry the most like you know they're, they're just too preoccupied with their men so if you look at the halfback line as the ball's thrown in uh, Obiugla gets fall. He follows into the midfield. Yep. Crowley goes into the midfield. They're they're both beyond the sixty five. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Paul Murphy's out wide, so there's no halfback line. Nobody's at number six. And then if you look at Paul Mannion and Rock, as soon as they saw that sort of road opening up, they both went to the corner. And you can actually see Mannion. I put up a picture on Twitter. Mannion's pointing at Conor Callahan and say, "Get out of the way." Yeah, get out of the way because the road is clear. Yeah. Here. yeah. And then, yeah, as you say, Tom O'Sullivan just blindly followed... Oh, look, they're they're all culpable. I can understand, you know, we spoke about it, you're under pressure, but the the individual never... Like, defence... Good defence is never... It's very rarely about individually being very good defensively in a one-on-one situation. Because good forwards... Get the get ball in hand one on one against even the best, even an average forward against the best defender in the country will be able to get a score. <laughs> you know, if you give him if you give him ten balls, he'd probably kick five. So you're talking about the best forwards against the best defenders. I can understand they're spooked, but one on one is not really what it's about. In that particular situation, the half they were all culpable. All back six were culpable. Really, you would have to say they were all dragged out of position. Stupid. I mean, this is stuff that you will be talking about saying, lads. Don't be sleepy on the restart. I mean, yeah, it's man. unbelievable. Every team has has a set play. You spot the danger. Yeah. I mean, if if Dublin win that ball and it's played out to Kieran Kilkenny in the left half forward position, sixty meters from goal, sure, what difference does that make? Yeah. He's going to get twenty of them in the course of the match. But for you to open up the entire centre of your defence and let somebody carry the ball unopposed is unbelievably bad. Unbelievably bad. You could not overstate how how yeah. bad that is. Like, why is it? Like, we looked last year. Remember Shane Walsh was dragging Lee Keegan out of centre back so they could hit Comer. Yeah. Why would you leave that six free? Like, like, if they win the break, so what? Like, you know what? Like, surely stopping a goal or that set play, as you say, is well, the most important. Well, I'll thing. give an example. In the first half of the game, Clifford got a number of points. Right. Clifford got four points from play. Yeah. He was been marked by Mick Fitzsimons. Mick Fitzsimons had a brilliant game. Super game. Right. A phenomenal game. Right. Excellent. <laughs> but yeah, but he's selfless. Like he, Correct. He'll go, Happen. yes. He leaves Clifford yeah. to, to block the danger, to block somebody going down the centre. And he, he's making the calculation because he's an intelligent footballer and he's round a long time and he understands the game that there's no point in me following Clifford out of the way here yeah. and your man runs and Stephen O'Brien or somebody runs down the middle and sticks it in the net. All right, I can stand here and say, oh, my man didn't score. Yeah. But that's not good defending. No, and, and it's it's a fundamental 
in defense of it is the first thing you do is what's best for the team here. Yeah, you know, and like if you if you have a, if you have a, and I've uh, you know we've I've heard him in the past. Well, my man didn't score, and you're thinking, yep. yeah, but you're playing corner back and they get in for three goals. You <laughs> yeah. know, and this sort of so, to me, and and there was talks, you know, talk about oh, it's, it, you know, it was it was something they've worked on Dublin and worked on, and there was so many things to go right for yeah. for it to work for Dublin, but you know, it's 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 unforgiven. I mean, you, you make sure that 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 D is protected at all yeah. times, yeah. at all times, and it, and as Keen right. Rightly states if, if if that meant that Paul Murphy has to leave his man, you know, so be it. Yeah. You know, th- we, we, we could uh, particularly at the at the because re- it's a real you always you always think before and after half time are really vulnerable Crucial, yeah. vulnerable times that you know, you say, don't give away a goal coming up to half time, it just swings the game. Um and then winning that throw in to set the tone straight away from the second half is 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 massive. Um, you know, so it's just it's 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 unbelievable that that Kerry got so sucked into that to that um, and again Merchant was an absolutely brilliant f- finish albeit he he had it under his arm for for a good bit of it <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. it was a brilliant finish you yeah. know doubt about it but Kerry Kerry will look back and 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 the defensive whoever looks after def- them defensively will be really you know in a dark room for a while saying <laughs> yeah. what what, what are yeah, we doing well, and because it's good attacking play from Dublin like Dublin are, Dublin's forwards are doing all the right things you know it's a sort of a thing that's preached to guys at underage football you know if there's somebody carrying the ball down the middle you get out of his way the forwards move out of the way mm-hmm. what's the purpose of that it's to open up the space <laughs> yeah. so he runs down the middle and the eejit of a defender follows you yeah. out with him mm. Jason Foley is that's, literally in the corner with Dean Ross like it's, it's just I pre- I'm waffling on about this a lot because I'm, it's just one of the things that is just so it's so bad and I cannot for the life of me understand how at that level of the game players make such bad yeah. decisions. It's just, it's, it's really, really and poor. And so many of them made, but if yeah. whatever but yeah. one lad making a bad right. decision, yeah. it's like as, and so many top class players made a bad decision all at the one time. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy. And it was such a game change. It, like it swung the game and, and Kerry never recovered from it. And, and that's the difference through Fitzsimons in the first half. Nailed Stephen O'Brien. Clifford gave him that little dirted hand pass. O'Brien had like rolled his man and he was in behind. And then Fitzsimons just leaves Clifford and nails him, stops the goal chance, wins the ball back. In the second half, Sean O'Shea was through. I think he left McCarthy on his arse or something like that. And then Fitzsimons comes out and meets him, falls over. Like, you know, and the two points... The two first points that Clifford got uh, it was because Fitzsimons was doubled up on O'Brien on another occasion and then he followed Sean O'Shea who was in behind. If he had just stayed with Clifford, Sean O'Shea was in behind. Mm. But that one little step back, like he concedes a point. Like he's, he's sacrificing his own stats and for even, the better of the team. And even if even if that ball came back to Clifford and he stuck it in the roof and net, Fitzsimons still did still the right did thing. Still did the right thing. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. You, you, you identify what's the, 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 the real danger, what are the percentages here Um. And and that's the thing to do, and, and that becomes an instinct over your defensive career. You know, you, you don't just arrive on, on yeah, the day and, and make those decisions. Yeah. That's it's a natural instinct, the same as it is every time David Clifford gets the ball. First thing his head is a shot on here, and that has to be the way. Um, if it's not, then he plays other people into the game, and that's. But defensively, you have to say, what is the best thing for me to do, and and in this situation is to stop a goal at high percentages. Um, Albeit, if it doesn't work out and the result goes against, I still do the right thing every time, and I think that's where where Dublin were were are and were excellent uh, on Saturday evening, where where Kerry got it totally wrong. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like it's good forward play by the likes of Clifford peeling on, giving giving Fitzsimons a decision to make. Like that's what it's all about. As as a forward, you're trying to test the defender. You're trying to put him in a situation where he has where he has decisions to make, and none of them are good decisions. You know, he has to, and he has to make them very very quickly. You know, we see it so often with defenders, they're touch tight on a forward and they're tearing out with them. The forward doubles back and he's in behind for a goal. Yeah. And you're kind of thinking, yeah, you want your defenders really tigerish. But defenders inherently have to be cautious. And good defenders are always cautious. Like you see Paul Mannion, for example, and Mannion gets a ball and Tyg Morley is a couple of yards off him. And Mannion swings the ball over from 40 metres. As a defender, you have to yeah. say, not a lot I can do about that. If I get too tight to Mannion and Mannion gets in behind me, there's serious danger here because he's too much pace, too much power. So they, the defenders have to respect that and stand that little bit off him. If you have defenders lunging in on the like of Mannion and that skips by, all of a sudden it's overlapped through and there's four or five goals been run in. So in, in that type of, mar- you know, 
Morley could be standing off him and Mannion would kick four points off him and everyone would be saying, oh, Morley, he was too loose. Mm. But, he, you know, Mannion is giving him hard decisions to make. He's nearly sucking him in with his, you know, tapping and hopping and soloing in front of him, saying, come on. You know, he's kind of trying to goad him into lunging forward at the tackle and then Mannion put the ball under his arm and go. So defenders at all times have been challenged to make these decisions throughout the course of a game. But as a collective, you know, there are certain things that are just sort of fundamentals mm. that should you know, that should supersede whatever individual stuff is going on. Yeah, like, that's, Mannion has this ability to, to kick the ball when he's on his heels, if that makes sense. It's like a, a fadeaway in basketball, you know, when you're drifting away from the block yeah, and yeah. he still manages to generate that power. I don't know. Yeah. If, I'm talking to two forwards. I'm looking for some advice here. And, and <laughs> you, may, you may go <laughs> to the mead, man. <laughs> I'm going to take notes on it too. Uh, but th- the thing about Mannion is he is unbelievably quick to get a shot off as well. He just needs a, a half a yard um, and all of a sudden then he just seems to lean back and he's, he's huge power yeah. um, I'm wondering about this vegan diet is, is that something to do with it <laughs> <laughs> as we famously heard earlier in the year um, but, and, and everything you know he's going to the, his left foot he doesn't really he's, like, he's not like a Sean Cavanagh that you're expecting this jink in. he just comes around and he just needs a split second and, and he gets a shot off and he's so accurate I mean I don't know what the stats are for the year, but he doesn't, like, there's very few he kicks wide. Yeah, that's true. Like, he's probably fallen off a bit, actually, in the latter end of the season in terms of his in terms of his accuracy. But certainly earlier on in the campaign, look, I suppose, you'd expect that in, in some of the games where it's a little bit easier for Dublin and easier for him, he's that little bit more time. But, look, four points from play, and I think he got two the first day, did he? So, mm. I mean, like, that's that's fair shooting. Like, I mean, that's an average three points from play in an all the final. Like, that's, you know, in such tight games... That's a huge, huge contribution, and that's that's only part of his contribution as well. As we know, like he he contributes massively to other facets of the game in terms of stretching defenders and you know his his showing for possession and you know does does a huge amount of work for them. And, and even the fact that that he's such a, a prolific forward, he takes that extra bit of watch and he, and all of a sudden then it gives space for others. Yeah, he correct, pull yeah. he'll pull a lad out and you think where's he going here? And all of a sudden then Kenny comes from nowhere and there's a big space and next thing the yeah. ball is over the bar. You know so. Yeah, like, that's Just very quickly on that, did did Kerry in the first half focus too much on Jack McCaffrey? Like I, I thought that might have freed up. So if you look at Kilkenny, O'Callaghan and Mannion got twelve points from play. Mm. Now they were a bit more on it than they were two weeks ago, but but they've O'Connor no choice. was pushed right up on McCaffrey. Yeah, but they've no choice. But would you not just let, let like just hope that he doesn't score one three again? Let yeah, him. well, I think that's the, maybe the percentage play. But I think if you look at it, I don't think they necessarily focused any more on McCaffrey. I think it's just that the way the game went. Um, Jack McCaffrey kind of came down the middle a couple of times and look I'm sure the Kerry players were a little bit wiser to him but I think they, they sewed him up a few times where they where they gave him a gap yeah. to come into knowing that they had cover there so and they they, they, they add him up a couple of times um, but look that will ha- you know th- I don't think they necessarily focus more on McCaffrey and less on the other players I think that Kilkenny probably just had a better game you know he, he didn't have a great game in the draw even though he came brilliantly into it near the end but in terms of the overall game he was quiet for large periods Whereas he came out and had just a huge match uh, from the very start the other day. Mannion even was a little bit off colour in the drawn game by his high standards. And he started the game really well too. So, look, and Conor Callan was probably just a little bit unlucky in the drawn game. Like, he he was, I'd say he played pretty much as, as well as he had done in the drawn game. Yeah. You know, he won every ball that went in. He was asking hard questions of the Kerry defenders every single time. So, I just think they, they maybe slightly upped it a little bit. But that's the way sometimes games can go I mean Mead played Dublin in the, in the earlier stages of the championship and none of Dublin's key forwards had any real yeah. impact on the game and Dublin still won by about I don't know what it was 16 points or something so yeah. they can hurt you from all areas of the, the field I, I think that's the big thing like there's no way you're going to go into that if you're Mark and Jack McCaffrey no matter what instructions come from the Kerry management that's not on your mind I've got to be toe to toe with this lad all the time Um and and you know you're watching for that because like he had a massive impact on the, in the first day and he's 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 probably you know every every game is different but he's he's liable to do that again he's done it yeah. in the past and you cannot go in uh, like if if Kerry had of you know maybe not focused a little bit on him and all of a sudden he's he's kicked a couple of pints again we'd be here yeah, absolutely you, yeah. you know. So you, and and I think that's where Dublin are really strong. You can you can you know we talk about the, Dublin's go to men and and Kilkenny is certainly one and Fenton is one of them and you know Brian Very Fenton did great, it, think, absolutely yeah. over both games yeah, you absolutely. know in fairness and, and there was a lot of talk about about Jack Barry whether he had the legs where he didn't start in a lot of games and he didn't you know and came into I thought 
albeit he didn't finish the game in the last day. But so, you know, they have so many go to men. And it's you think, yeah, I've, I've a fire put out there, I've a fire yeah, put out there's there. There's too many fires to put out. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. And and on top of that then you have to play your own game. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so there's so and that's that's the real quality the quality in Dublin. And I know, you know, the winner gets all the bouquets and, and throwing again. And Kerry did an awful lot right. An awful lot right. They absolutely did. You know, yeah. and, and, both games did absolutely and, and, well. and they deserve it because like I I'm looking at I'm looking at, at Clifford, I'm looking at Sean O'Shea these guys um, or be um, Dara Mine who's probably a little bit behind those guys but these are these are young lads 20 years of age like you, I go back to when I was 20 and I was you know you're thinking oh my god imagine being at that level at yeah. that age you know yeah. and they're just they're phenomenal yeah. and we're going to be in 10 years time in 12 years time we're going to be looking at these players you know still pulling the strings for Kerry maybe a couple of all earnings in, uh, uh, to their to their credit, um, so they deserve a lot of credit for 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 where where they're after coming from, um, and 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 certainly they made, you know, it all all right. Dublin won, and, and as I said, when when you win, everything is great, and when you lose, everything is, and there's probably a balance somewhere in between, but they deserve massive credit for two unbelievable games, and you know. I would be I would be always um, a little bit envious of the hurlers because you know they seem to be the the top sport and and maybe rightly so for a long time. But to finish the championship in the way we did with two with the two games we got, I think we were very privileged. Lovely stuff. Next up, we'll look at Paddy Power's performance of the weekend. All right, so I think David Clifford definitely deserves a mention early on. Five points, four from play, four off his right foot as well. Do that in the final after questions being asked of him two weeks ago, even though he got one of the most experienced defenders in Ireland sent off. Stepped up again for them, stepped up more so, I thought, um, alongside Paul Ganey, who he seems to hit like James O'Donoghue, I think, has been trying to play this role for the last five years, and Ganey's just in the last couple of weeks showed him how to do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that's a very, very difficult role to play, particularly yeah. for for somebody like Paul, who's who really probably wants to be closest man into goal. He's a, he's a brilliant finisher, and that's probably ideally where he wants yeah. to be. So he's 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 had to develop maybe a different a different facet to his game to to play that a little bit further out, and to obviously cover it do the mileage that he's having to do as well because he's spe- he, you know one of the scores he picked up the ball in his own half back line, um, really really good. He was a bit unfortunate near the end, couple of. You know, with a little bit of his decision making, but you know, you'd absolutely forgive him. I mean, yeah. four points from play, absolutely huge, and caused all sorts of problems. You know, even given the fact that he was under huge pressure at times. I mean, some of the sc- one one score in particular with Davy Byrne was all over him like a yeah, rash, yeah. and he was having to having to change and jink back and everything. You know, that was a that was brilliant one on one defending and brilliant, uh, brilliant forward play and brilliant score taking. So he had a huge game, and Clifford. Clifford's stood up again. Really, look, he's he's an excellent player. He's a very young guy. You know, he has, l- I'm sure, loads of areas to improve on in his game. Although it's hard to f- it's hard to see <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. But, but uh, he'll benefit from the experience. And um, yeah, look at the, Kerry. You would feel her in. You know, it's you can't really say it now because they're after losing all in final. But they have you know huge huge amount of positive things to look forward to. Mm. Sean O'Shea just made a tough stuff as well. He probably deserves a, a mention in there uh, from Dublin. Owen Merchant, obviously. Mark Stephen O'Brien did a hell of a job doing that and then yeah. obviously had such a big impact that he didn't have two weeks ago. He was on the ball a lot two weeks ago, but a lot more conservative. When he picked up the ball there on Saturday, he was just driving at the heart yeah. of him every time. And and he looks like when he went in in on, on goal for that goal he took he he looked like he was just in a canter. And yeah. he, you know, it's a, it's funny you hear some of the some of the Dublin players after saying he's actually the fastest player. Uh, on the team, and you're thinking, my God, if he's faster <laughs> than Jack McCafferty, he's yeah. some, he's some, uh, some, some legs on him. But he does everything simple. That's what I like about him. There's no, you know, there's he just does the simple thing very, very well. And even, even to, to show the composure for he, for such a young guy, to show the composure he did for for the goal. Like if 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 Dean Rock or or, or Paul Mannion or Clifford to score that goal, we'd be talking about it as one of the greatest goals ever scored. Just to, and like as Keane pointed out it was his only option so to to, to see that to, to be able to identify that yeah. at full flight with with probably the biggest man on the field in, in, in um, David Moore clawing away at you um, and to be able to execute it like he did and, and as I said the goalkeeper never moved it was just phenomenal. Like, if you did it in the back garden at home, you'd stop and you'd clap. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was phenomenal um, from, yeah. from such a young guy. I think he, he deserves huge credit. 
Yeah, and like um, Kieran Kilkenny was having the time of his life out there. I don't know what happened to Gavin Crowley this week. He he was just wasn't keeping up the pace of him. Kilkenny got off the mark early, scored two off his left, two off his right. I think always in the right place. One kick outs as usual, one breaks, knitted the play together. Just another top drawer performance. Yeah, look, I think I think when it really comes down to it, Kilkenny can just he can just outrun you. He just yeah. outruns all his opponents. He. It, he, they just can't live with his athleticism over the course of a, over the course of a match. And when he started the way he did, being as direct as he was, and kind of going back to what you would expect from Kilkenny in my mind, which is a centre forward who who wants to get scores, not just kind of pass the ball over and back out, you know, further out the field, you know. And it was a crucial contribution from him that just that little switch in mentality where he's. And we spoke about it before. With you know, when Michael Murphy ends up out the field, he forgets that he's a score threat because he's he's trying to spend so much energy doing all this work and left and right. Whereas, what we what every team would want with Michael Murphy in is driving and attacking, and that's what you want from Kilkenny because he has that ability, that pace, that power. He can obviously shoot off both feet. That if he's getting inside the forty five meter line and he's he's driving at defenders and taking them on and and you know making those hard hard line runs in support very very hard to stop and very hard to handle. If you were marking him, you'd be happier to see him out the field. Yeah. But his ball winging ability is huge. His athleticism, Gavin Crowley, an impossible task if you ask me. Yeah. yeah. And and the one thing I always like about Kilkenny, there's more than one, but particularly <laughs> this one thing, um, is you just get the impression that. Regardless of what comes at me, I'm going to be going as hard at the end of this game as yeah, I am to start. Yeah. And it's only going to take, I'll keep I'll keep knocking at the door, I'll keep, you know, and all of a sudden it could be, all right, he started really well, but he's liable to think you have him in your pocket for, for a lot of periods. All right, he's getting on ball, he's throwing it, from, throwing it around, but he's just able to work and work and work. And by the time the 60th minute, the 70th minute comes, he's still going and you're thinking, all he needs is half a chance here, and he's yeah. going, and he's going to, you know, and he's 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 also a great man just to give that little weighted pass to a man running on. It's just, you know, bounces maybe in front of him. He just sees that little. It's not even a looping pass. Yeah. It's just little, player doesn't have to break. It doesn't break straight. You know, soft and we've pass. we've a soft pass exactly, and we've seen him do that over and over. And and uh, you know, we probably talk about him in performance. You know, and he got man of the match for his score getting. I think if you're just looking at that, you're missing the bigger picture oh, of him because he's yeah. he's just he's he's like the orchestra of of that Dublin uh, attack and you know everything positive that happens he's involved in. Yeah, yeah, and he's covering gaps as well. He made a fantastic diving block in the yeah, second half absolutely. as well. So I mean, yeah. like talk about a an all action performance from your centre half forward. I mean, that's that's the sort of level that that he's able to perform at. He can kind of you know you could easily throw him in there midfield and he'd be hard to handle. You could probably play him left half back or centre half back and he'd be. He'd be, you know, he'd be effective nearly wherever you'd play him. Yeah, Mick Fitzsimons, we mentioned him, and the last one I have down here is Brian Howard. Like there was one stage where uh, he looked to be about thirty percent, seventy percent to get the ball, and Stephen O'Brien, in fairness, was ahead of him, and it was a kick out, and he literally flew across the air horizontally, caught it above O'Brien's head, took a shoulder before he hit the ground, and still came back up with the ball, like. He's just a, a fucking animal. <laughs> like there, there's no other way of saying it. Like that's yeah. what he is. And uh, you you're looking for examples of sheer desire. And you know you can talk you can talk all you want about what Dublin have, and you know whether it's it's all back to the, the resources and all that. You cannot buy that. You cannot uh, give someone that sheer will to win. That regardless of anything else, I'm winning this ball. And there's no you know nothing going through his head about well, am I going to get hurt here. This is about a team. This is about us, and this is the and you know you can always talk. You know, hear it all the time talked about you know pride in the jersey, pride in the jersey. To me, it's not about that, and to me, it's about the man in the jersey. And when you look at Brian Howard there, you're thinking, wouldn't you just love him on your team? Because selfless is you know just no matter what's needed, he row in and do it. And 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 that passage alone to me shows up what Dublin are all about. That pass to play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, again, another man of just huge athleticism and drive that he'll win any type of ball that goes at him. You know, he he has the pace to get away from people. He has the strength to hold guys off. He has an incredible spring. He played the second half in midfield. You can you know he's played centre back from before. Yeah. He's played wing back, wing for you know sweeper. Again, he, again, just an intelligent footballer. Huge athleticism. 
great skill level and massive, massive heart as well yeah. in terms of that sort of competitive spirit that those Dublin guys have. And it takes a hell of a lot to match it. And, you know, again, brilliant performance from him and Fitzsimons again. Really, really good. Like, really good. Like, it's amazing, you know, it's it's unusual to be talking about two players that were kind of marking each that's other. Yeah. That's Simons. when it's a proper yeah. battle. But like, it? yeah, exactly. And that's what it's about. It's about the, the game, even though you can have man-on-man battles, it's oftentimes in the, te- the nature of a team sport is that it's very rare, or it, it can sometimes be rare in a game that they're both man-to-man combat for yeah. the whole thing. You know, they're both doing things for the, for the good of their team you know, throughout the throughout the seventy minutes, not just focusing on their own individual stuff. So yeah, look, everyone you've named there, you know, huge performances in an All Ireland yeah. final. The only uh, special mention I want to throw in there is Philly McMahon, who before he came on, Tommy Walsh was standing on the sidelines. So Dublin quickly deployed McMahon. They were standing beside each other. The fourth official was ready to put up the the board, and McMahon starts pushing at him. So none of them are on the pitch at this stage, and he's shouldering him on the sideline. The f- officials trying to get the light up very quickly, and then the referee eventually waves him on, and he just pushes him the whole way into the full forward line. But at stage, the hill are just like, oh, "Get in here for this!" Like you know, and. Uh, yeah, I just thought that's that's yeah. typical Philly McMahon. Uh, me, yeah. me and Johnny used to love cornerbacks like that. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many balls did he win? Yeah. <laughs> None. He, he was well able. To, I, I had to go out the, out the field because I couldn't handle the, the pressure in there. <laughs> Keane was well able for it. Yeah. <laughs> so who do we have, lads? I'm going to need your help here to pick. So, Keane, I'll start with you first. Um, I, I think I'd probably give it to Kieran Kilkenny. Merchant probably made the telling contribution that he did with the goal, but overall, playing the full 70 minutes, doing stuff all over the field, and probably by setting the tempo of how Dublin played, I think Kieran, Kieran Kilkenny would be my pick. Johnny? Yeah, and it's it's not often that Mead and Kilkenny uh, agree <laughs> on too many things, but I, he's the same for me. Um, lo- loads of brilliant performances, but for a complete package, you know, thrown in from his defensive game. Uh, obviously his score getting but just to make things look very easy you know little little passes here and there to set up players he's just a really good intelligent footballer and he never tries to be anything he's not and there's no bells and whistles with him he just gets on and it's nearly like you know just let me out here and, and let me do my thing and, and looks to be really enjoying it and um, for me, he was the top performer of the weekend. Mm. Well, I'll agree with you. Full house for Kieran Kilkenny. Congratulations, Kieran! You're the Paddy Power performance of the weekend. Um, that's it, lads. That's all we have time for. Another championship over and done with. And what a championship it's been. We're not going to get into talking about <laughs> what a good championship has been. We'll do that some other stage. Thanks very much, lads. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a great championship. And we'll be back on Wednesday for a full show on the ladies' final. We'll probably skim over the first half. There wasn't much to talk about from that. We'll see you then.